got commissioned to make the biggest painting I have ever worked on and I decided to make this video documenting the process. The client picked this piece of mine as a style reference and after discussing the colors that they wanted to use, I was able to get started. Because of the size of this painting, my partner was able to build the frame for me. I just had to figure out how to wrap it. After watching more than a few YouTube videos and psyching myself up, I decided just to jump right into it, hoping that I didn't mess this part up. To trim the canvas closer to the size I needed, I cut a small slice on the edge and ripped it like fabric. This kept the edges nice and straight while I made it smaller. Starting in the middle of one of the longest sides, I put three staples in a line at a 45 degree angle to distribute the weight. Always working on parallel sides, pulling the canvas as tight as possible without overextending it. As I worked my way around the canvas, securing the sides, I would rip away any excess and continue to staple. Before getting to a point that the corners could be stapled down. So the canvas is wrapped and I am officially terrified. There is one corner that protrudes a little bit and that is exactly what my mom had said may happen when I showed her just the wooden frame over FaceTime. I could pull out a ton of staples and unwrap the canvas, fix the frame, and then rewrap the canvas. It was my first time wrapping a canvas, so I'm scared if I unwrap the canvas and then rewrap the canvas, it's just not gonna look right. My intention behind the spray paint was to lay out the color blocking in the fastest way possible without overthinking it. I knew I'd be able to cover a lot of space and blend fairly easily. I did spend a good amount of time staring at the painting before getting it to a level that I was happy with. Using the unmixed acrylic paint, I went in with a damp sponge and started giving depth, blending out the edges. At this point, I wasn't concerned about detail, I just wanted to start building it up. I had to start introducing mixed colors, I really didn't have a plan for what to do next. I tried swiping the colors together, but it just felt off and I really couldn't find a rhythm. It was also damaging the layers underneath, so I knew that I had to pivot to something else. Starting with the darkest unmixed paints, I just put down a few swipes, not knowing what direction or desired look I was trying to achieve. As I moved on to the lighter colors, a style or method was developed and I became more intentional with the strokes. I started mixing colors, always using the same base colors, so everything shared similar undertones. Staggering and stacking the colors on the paintbrush seemed to work well. I also let the paint build up on the brush as I worked with the two colors. So instead of filming a week's worth of time lapses, I decided to go ahead and cover the rest of the painting using the swiping technique. This was my first time doing something like this and it was a really fun way to cover a lot of the painting while giving it some movement. I'm definitely gonna be experimenting more with this in the future. Next up, I'm gonna be using some sponges to try and blend in some of the colors. I will be using pouring medium to aid in the blending process and hopefully not cover up too much of what I've already done. Just make it a little less busy. 
I did like this technique. It was easy to diffuse the colors into the pouring medium. It does dry with a glossy finish, but I find that's gonna be okay because I will be applying a gloss coat in the end. After a few tests, I moved over to the canvas and started applying the black ink drip, using a pipette to connect the spaces in between. Working in layers, letting them completely dry. I quickly learned not picking up the canvas from the center made the ink run all sorts of crazy ways. Soon realizing this was going to take a lot of layers and drying time. Once a rough shape was laid out, I started filling in the surrounding areas using the pipette to move the ink around. I do like the effect of dripping ink down the canvas, but I always underestimate how long it takes to actually achieve. Working on a canvas this size is definitely new to me, so saying that this took many hours is no exaggeration. I did quickly learn that one must lift the canvas from the center to prevent the ink from running at an angle. So it's definitely not perfect, but I am ready to move on to the next step. I started by laying out some sticky notes in the general shape that I wanted to pour the paint in. This allowed me to better visualize and make small adjustments. For the paint, I mixed it with some pouring medium, latex extender, and water until I got a thick glue-like consistency. I was careful not to add too much pouring medium to prevent crazing. Once I was happy with the rough shape, I used a pipette to smooth out the line and add line weight variancy. Once that had completely dried, I took a photo of the painting and roughly sketched out where I wanted the second line to be. Using the reference photo and an oil pastel, I was able to map it out on the painting breaking the line into sections, repeating the same process as before. After it dried, I mixed up some off-white paint with a very thin consistency and dropped it randomly all over the painting. I am so close to almost finishing this painting. I'm going to move on to using a string gel medium mixed with some white paint and just try and fling it all over the surface of the canvas. One of the challenges is going to be creating thick marks with this medium versus very thin lines. Just because of the scale of the canvas, I do believe it will suit it a little bit better. Then I'll be moving on to finishing the edges of the painting with the darkest blue colored paint and some masking tape. Once that's all dried, I'm gonna go back in with a gloss glaze medium, just seal in the surface of the painting as well as bring some depth to the colors. I could not be happier with how this painting turned out and I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity to be able to create a painting this size. Here's a cute little picture of me and my studio assistant along with the painting. All in all, this process went pretty seamless. The corner I was worried about in the beginning ended up not even being noticeable because of the texture of the paint strokes. I learned a bunch of new skills and I'm really excited to see how my style progresses in the future. As always, thank you for sticking around to the end of this video and I I hope you enjoyed it.